Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh to Prof. Dr. Nik Nazli binti Nik Ahmad. We are from Group 8, Section 3. I am Fatin Nabilah and my group members consist of Amirah, Afini and Fatin Nabiha. Our presentation consists of introduction, changes in operations, recommendations, impacts and lessons. First of all, let me introduce the three broad sectors in business such as primary, secondary and tertiary. Primary consists of all businesses from raw materials such as mining and farming, while secondary consists of businesses from construction and tertiary consists of businesses from services such as retail, accommodation and education. For this group project, we have chosen Genting Berhad that is involved in the tertiary sector, especially in tourism. This company, Genting Berhad, was incorporated in 1980 by late Tan Sri Lim Goh Tong, and this company also comprises of Genting Malaysia, Genting Plantations, and Genting Mal Singapore Limited. This big company main services are in leisure and hospitality, which is from their famous resorts called as Resort World Genting. The main attractions of these resorts are their tip park, dining and retail outlets, as well as concert shows and their business convention facilities. In 2019, they have received market capitalization of 19 billion from their services and leisure hospitality. Today, Genting Berhad is led by Transri Lim Kok Te and is known as the leading integrated resort operator in the world because they are having other resorts in New York City, Bahamas, Birmingham and Cairo. From this, we can say that Genting Berhad major processes are customer services and performance measurement. From this major process, their customer services are related with team parks, hotels, seaside resorts, cable car and cruise operators. For their loyal customers, they will receive a loyalty card program named Genting World Card where this loyal where this loyalty card rewards their members for every time they spend at the resort. Besides that, this company also involved in performance measurement where every managers are required for management process for their direct reports. To achieve greater efficiency in their workers' performance, each department will have one specialized person called as manager. Each department is under the control of the chairman, which is Tan Sri Lim Kok Te. And at the third quarter of the year, each, each manager needs to present their report towards their chairman. Now, I will pass the button to next presenter, Amira. The first aspect that change on its operations are in terms of productivity whereby there is decline in supply of palm production due to labour shortage at Genting Plantation Division. This is because Malaysia plantation sector is dependent on foreign labour to acquire low skill and low cost workers to minimise its overhead cost. The labor shortage due to immigration department has begun restricting travel involving Malaysians and permanent residents from leaving the country during movement control order. Plus, the entry of foreign tourists and visitors had also been barred. Next, 
Genting Berhad is planning to revise the timeline for the completion and opening of its project in Genting Highland, which is the outdoor theme park that has been delayed in its operations as a result of the COVID-19 pandemic. This is because its operations has been running at a reduced capacity as a safety precaution and to reduce its operating expenses due to the disruption of its business activities. This caused the operations to be affected and cannot operate at its normal capacity. As a result, the project could not complete on time due to lack of resources and labour productivity due to the COVID-19 situation. According to Ministry of International Trade and Industry, only a maximum of 10% of managerial or supervisory level employees in selected fields will be allowed to work in the office until the end of the movement control order period, and the rest of the employees need to work from home. This these new rules are crucial for employers at Genti Berhad headquarters office as they should consider modifying or developing a company policy or guidelines to provide clear guidance on implementing work from home arrangement. Besides that, Genti Berhad needs to adapt to the new rules and protocols on safety measures whereby its subsidiary company Genti Hong Kong Green Cruises has worked closely with various local and regional authorities to enforce precautionary measures across its ships which in compliance with the Singapore government's policies. So, Green Cruises has set up a health and temperature management system for all boarding guests and crew members prior to every sailing as well as perform street sanitization procedures, especially in high-touch areas. The crew members were required to wear face masks all the time and other necessary equipment, including disposable gloves and provide free passengers' facial masks that are always available upon request by the passengers. These measures are, are taken as an initiative to reduce the spread of coronavirus and the risk of getting affected by the passenger on board. Meanwhile, the resort working teams have revised its, its procedure and established a detailed safety plan in line with the government guidelines. They have implemented safety Stay Safe Promise that outlines resort work and safety measure. The Stay Safe Promise program, First World Hotel is introducing the digital key as a better alternative to the usual key cards. Guests can just lock and unlock their hotel room with just a simple tap via the Resorts World Gunting mobile app on their mobile phone and it will appear in the app throughout their stay. In addition, Resort World Gunting carry out a MySajatra check-in at all of its key entrances and outlets Throughout the resort and guests must undergo temperature screening before entering Genting's theme park areas. All the rides and attractions will be operating at reduced capacity and hand sanitizer stations are located at entry points and within guest areas. In the amusement arcades, Resort World Genting have rearranged the layout to incorporate additional spacing between arcade settings. In addition, service ambassadors are positioned in strategic locations to handle visitors provide sanitizers, try and manage unwell customers. Cleaning and disinfection of the indoor park is done on a regular basis, which is aligned with federal guidelines as well as industry best practices. High-touch surfaces such as handrails, ride restraints and arcade machines will also undergo increased cleaning frequency. Guests are also encouraged to make contactless payment to minimize the handling of cash and items that are sold are not allowed for refund which is in according to federal and state regulations. Besides that, signage is posted at the entrance of each retail store and kiosks reminding guests of social distancing requirements and the retail kiosks will have to limit capacity to three guests that can be served at one time. The last aspect of on-business operations that changes during COVID-19 for Genting Berhad is on its operations whereby as the government initiative to stop COVID-19 infection, all resorts in Malaysia have been closed since 18 March 2020 as part of national shutdown which barred most business from operating. Resort World Sentosa also suspended all guest offerings, hotel and resorts from 6 April 2020 to 30 June 2020 due to Singapore government directive. This will reduce the economic activity following the suspension of operations by non accession service providers and reduce the operating capacity of manufacturing firms which mentioned previously on the labour shortage and reduced productivity at Genting Plantation. However, Resort World Genting ensure that uh, its critical services that are centred at the resort such as protection, fire and rescue, utilities and clinics will continue to operate throughout this time adding that they will resume operations as of 1 April 2020. 
However, during the recovery phase period, the reopening of Genting operations are by phases as the company responds and adapt to strict operating protocols to protect its customer and employees with continued compliance on the new SOP. Resort will continue remains open as usual, but we continue to monitor the situation and provide necessary updates to the guests. Meanwhile, its gaming activities and entertainment at Genting Grand Hotel are open to Genting Reward members only due to the limited capacity. Resort World Genting has been continuously performing total cleaning and sanitization throughout the resort as well as adhering to strict SOPs provided by the government. This involves the observation of physical distancing, wearing facial masks at all times and practice good personal hygiene habits to ensure the health and safety of all guests and employees. For me, I will pass to the next presenters. Thank you. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Next, we move to the recommendations for Genting Berhad to turn the change arising from this pandemic into the opportunities for their future growth. So, the pandemic of COVID-19 has impacted many organizations and thus affecting the economy of the country. It is advisable for each organization to come out with uh, new strategies to ensure that uh, the organization can sustain in the future, especially those that have been negatively affected by this pandemic, including Genting Berhad. Hence, uh, we have come up with few recommendations that can be considered by Genting Berhad in order to turn these changes into opportunities for future growth. So the first recommendation uh, for Genting Berhad is to collaborate with the online delivery industry. So this strategy will be the short-term strategy, three to six months for Genting Berhad that can be done immediately. So during this pandemic, the demand for online delivery has increased and this has positively impacted the industry, especially the online food delivery service. With people stuck at home during MCO and CMCO, the demand for online food delivery has been increasing as they prefer to buy food online instead of going to the store and having a physical contact with outside people to avoid the spreading of uh, COVID-19. Hence, uh, the reason behind collaborating with uh, online food delivery is to take advantage of the food and beverages industry. As we all know, uh, food is an essential necessity for every human being. We believe that this industry will continue to grow in the future as the online delivery services will become part of society even after the post-COVID-19 pandemic with this new trend that has been uh, practicing widely by the society. In addition to this, uh, Genting Berhad can also expand its uh, business into food and beverages industry since uh, there is no food operational change in its operation yet. So this can be done after the collaboration with online food delivery where uh, it can use the collaboration to distribute its food as the platform of the distribution channel, meaning that they distribute their foods through the online food delivery. So we believe that uh, this will contribute to the future growth of Genting Berhad as the FMB industry as well as the online delivery industry will continue to sustain in the future years uh, um, even after the post-COVID-19 pandemic as this has become the new norm of people. Uh, next, uh, moving on to the medium-term strategy with time frame uh, 1 to 3 years, where Genting Berhad uh, should also consider opening its own hotels in Cameron Highlands. So, uh, based on the data reported by Malaysian Association of Hotels, Cameron Highlands is the most suitable place for Genting Berhad to take advantage of the gradual growth in Cameron Highlands after the MCO has been lifted because it recorded a high occupancy rate. There is also no doubt uh, that the opening of the hotel at Cameron Highlands will receive a positive response from people and uh, they will also have its own customers since Genting Berhad is very popular in Malaysia as it has over 3.3 million members alone in Malaysia's operations in its loyalty card program. 
called Genting Wood Card. And apart from its own popularity, this can also help Genting Berhad to have a bright future growth as domestic travel is encouraged by the government in Malaysia. And it is expected to increase gradually after MCO ends. The government has been planning many strategies for the recovery of the tourism industry in order to increase the nation's economic growth by allocating 1 billion ringgit under the Penjana Tourism Financing, PTF, and launching Seri Siri Jelajah Semarakan Pelancongan Domestic in its state. So through these various incentives provided by the government, uh, Malaysians are expected to respond well with these incentives and start to travel domestically in order to ensure that the economic growth can be recovered slowly through the increase in the tourism industry. Hence, uh, it is clear that this strategy can help Genting Berhad in its future growth as it can enjoy the recovery of the dom domestic tourism in the future years and at the same time will have its operation expanded in new geography areas that already have popular attraction among tourists. Uh, lastly, we move on to the long-term strategy which the time frame, time frame is 4 years and above. Uh, the time frame is 4 years and above because uh, it is reported that the tourism industry will fully recover after 4 years, meaning that by 2024. So since the announcement of MCO last March, the tourism industry has been greatly affected by this where the growth of this industry has dropped significantly and this has given further impact on the airline industry in which their growth has also been slowed down due to travel restriction imposed by the government. Hence, uh, the last recommendation for Gantin Berhad for the sake of its future growth is to merge with AirAsia which has also been negatively impacted by this pandemic to build their operations together by attracting tourists to use their services after the travel restriction by the government is lifted. The merging of Genting Berhad and Asia should be able to attract domestic as well as foreign tourists to use their services with the affordable and interesting services of it. So the question is, how can they do this? So our suggestion is to improve their services together by offering packages as well as discounts to the customers that wish to use their uh, services. For example, um, Genting Berhad can offer family staycation packages with AirAsia in which those who wish to travel and book the resorts or hotels owned by Genting Berhad across the world will be able to choose the package that comes together with AirAsia tickets for transportation. So this will attract the customers to use their services with the packages offered that can cut their travelling costs. Apart from that, uh, the latest news from Getting Berhad regarding its grand opening of a new outdoor theme park, uh, which is the Genting Skyward. Genting Berhad should use the opportunity of this new attraction to attract more local and foreign tourists by offering discounted tickets for this new theme park that comes with the purchase of AirAsia tickets. So this will help Genting Berhad to have a bright future in its leisure and hospitality services with the merging as it will be able to attract more customers with the attractive packages of it. So that's all from my part. I will pass to the next presenter. Thank you. Moving on to the impact of this pandemic to Genting Berhad, we can see that Genting faced huge challenges as its core activities are in the leisure and hospitality business. However, the COVID-19 pandemic has certainly wrecked vault throughout the world. Travel and tourism industry is among the most affected sectors due to this pandemic. There was massive fall in international demand amid global travel restrictions, including many borders being fully closed to contain the virus. Therefore, we can see that the first impact of COVID-19 is that it slows down the world tourism industry, including in Malaysia. According to the world tourism industry, international tourist arrival decreased by 70% over the same period from last year, and several borders being completely closed to control the ongoing COVID-19 pandemic. The report states that every destination around the world continue to have some sort of travel restriction associated with the COVID-19. So, According to the latest travel website, IATA Travel Center team, it shows that the most countries are having partially 
restrictive travel regulation and from the latest up only some country do not have restrictive travel regulation which is in the light blue color as you can see which are Brazil, Mexico, Afghanistan and Turkey. Besides that, Malaysia also is heavily affected as the overall tourist expenditure decreased by 70% from last year in the first six months of 2020. The official tourism Malaysia cited that the country only received 4.2 million tourist arrival in the first half of 2020. This represented a decline of almost 70% compared to the same period from last year, uh, which is from January to June, in which Malaysia received over 13.3 million tourist arrival. Following the declaration of COVID-19 as a pandemic by the World Health Organization, WHO, on March 11, the Malaysia government placed a movement control order, MCO, to ban the entry of foreign tourists starting on March 18. Therefore, the long-awaited campaign of Visit Malaysia 2020 festivities were halted due to the outbreak. The event could expose huge risks to Malaysia as 50% of the visitors in Malaysia are from Singapore and China. Singapore and China are the top three countries contributing to the tourism industry, with almost 2 million tourists coming from those two regions. Rising cases of COVID-19 in both countries have resulted in several tours being cancelled, which has already contributed to a significant drop in number of Malaysian visitors. Secondly, Kenting Berhad faced poor cash flow and significant slowing down in the revenue growth for the year 2020. The group announced revenue of 8.5 million for the current nine months in quarter three report compared to 16.3 million in the nine months of the previous year, which reflect a 48% fall. The decrease came primarily from leisure and hospitality division due to the COVID-19 outbreak. Besides leisure and hospitality division, others that are affected are power, property, oil, gas and investment. The lower revenue from resort World Genting was due to the lower business volume as the resort continued to operate with reduced capacity as the group was also heavily affected by the operation of the group in the UK and US. From 6 April 2020 to 30 June 2020, all its gas deals and hotels were temporarily suspended, thus impacting sales and adjusted net income for the current nine months. Meanwhile, Resort World Genting is operated in Pahang, Langkawi and Terengganu. As strategically located as the main tourist attraction in Malaysia, so it is not surprising that thing will continue to face their loss and harder to recover because of many restrictions and SOP to adhere by the citizens. Therefore, the company need to undertake many control and safety measures during this pandemic in order to operate their business, which definitely result in increase in cost. On the bright side, one of the Gating division has a positive impact on its revenue from this COVID-19. In the third quarter, the plantation division had a rise in their revenue based from last year. The revenue significantly increased by 140%, but since the plantation is not their primary player, the rise could not cater the loss they are facing due to the pandemic. Um, based on the quantity report, plantation division revenue increased due to the stronger palm product prices and higher demand for its refined palm product. This is one of the economic consequences which the COVID-19 disrupt the supply chain of which COVID-19 disrupt the supply chain of product, especially in the oil industry, which the palm oil price significantly increased due to not enough of worker. And as a weaker Malaysian currency has made it cheaper for overseas buyer. Lastly, the last impact of COVID-19 to the company is that resort owner Genting Malaysia Berhad also had to restructure its activity due to the business loss caused by restriction to control the COVID-19 pandemic. It includes cutting salaries and right-sizing the workforce of the company. The main reason is why because the temporary disruption to the group or resort operation worldwide and they need to reduce their operating costs to remain sustained in the business as hotels operate on high overhead and liability. Genting Malaysia put in a statement stating that they will assess and recalculate its cost structure including employee requirement based on its current and future operating capacity in order to further manage costs and to mitigate the adverse financial impact. This is also reflected in the quarter 3 of Genting quarterly report in which Genting Berhad clarified that lower adjusted net income was reported due to the lower sales which was partly mitigated by a decline in payroll and associated costs as a result of lower headcount and lower operating expense. 
According to the source told to the Edge Market website, they are retrenching about 10 to 20 percent of their workforce, which stands at about 20,000 workers in Genting, Malaysia. Thank you, Afini. Moving on to the lessons from pandemic experience. As we know, COVID-19 has altered economic landscape worldwide, and one of those countries that have affected is Malaysia. COVID-19 has given a huge impact because demand in tourism industry has declining and many businesses are facing losses and some of them are shutting down their businesses. The lessons that we can draw from this pandemic experience are sustainability is vital in tourism industry the importance of having financial buffer, prioritize digital transformation is shown that during the movement control order, approximately 3.37 billion of losses have been experienced by the tourism and hospitality, and some of them are shutting down their business because there are losses, there are huge losses for their business. Sustainability, sustainability the issue has been taken for granted because there are lack of molded that are need to be used in tourism industry and the implementation of sustainability model is lack of acceptable for the people and culture in the worldwide. Thus, the idea of the real sustainability is totally defective to be achieved. Financial buffer, or mostly called as cash reserve, is important for business to keep growing and long-lasting. This is because when there is in case of emergency happen, a company needs cash reserve or financial buffer to pay their employee <coughs> and to pay their suppliers for any circumstances, so that when during a pandemic, this cash reserve or financial buffer is really needed in order to make the company keep growing and not having difficulties in uh, to pay their employees and to pay for their suppliers. Besides that, businesses need to priori prioritize digital transformation in marketing because nowadays most people are using mobile phones and most of the transaction happen during online business. If, if a business does not involve in trans, uh, digital transformation in marketing, they will, they will be neglected and they will be far behind from other businesses. When they are doing online marketing or transformation, digital transformation, uh, through social media such as Facebook, Instagram, they will keep getting uh, in touch with their customers and by this, when they are having deep connection with their customers, their customers will have trust in them and will they will gain their, their customers' loyalty to keep buying their products in the future. So, Digital transformation is needed for a business to keep growing. That's all from our group. Thank you.